What is a title company, and why should we pay for it? That's what we're talking about today. Well, you didn't open the chair for me? <laughs> what are you going to do with this? Hearing is in session. I'm Eric Wiss, realtor with Presidio Real Estate. Jason Christiansen, mortgage loan officer. And I'm Tyler Kazaya, Utah real estate agent. And we're here with Greg Hansen from Rudden Hawks Title. I want to see how long you can keep that accent. I can't. <laughs> <laughs> the whole time. <laughs> Hello. So my name is Greg Hansen. I'm with Rudden Hawks Title. Uh, we have uh, four locations across the Wasatch Front, Orem, Sandy, Bountiful, and Layton. Uh, I also, we are here in the Hale Center Theater, Orem, who has graciously allowed us to, to film on their stage. Uh, I'm actually in the show that you see behind us. It's called Dirty Rotten Scoundrels, and I play a character called Lawrence Jameson. So, little plug for Hale Center Theater, Orem. Thank yes. you for doing that for us. We're nope. in the Hale Center Theater to talk about title. You're probably wondering what title even is. Because no one knows what title is. No right. one knows anything about title because all I do is all of the background stuff. I s lurk in the shadows until it's time to come out and sign the closing documents. So no one really knows what title officers do. Title, so I'll tell you what title is not. Title is not a real estate agent. Right. Title is not your lender. So the title doesn't give you your loan. That's the lender's job. Title doesn't represent you in the transaction. That's the real estate agent's job. Right. A title company handles the paperwork to transfer, transfer the ownership of the title from one person or people to another person or people or entity if you have like a, you know, an LLC or an estate. Mm -hmm. And we don't represent anybody in the transaction. We're neutral. a neutral third party. Mm -hmm. Yeah, right. And that's important because yeah. if you were representing one person or the other, People might think it's slanted at the end. Right? Exactly. When it's all closed. There would be bias. Yes. There would be. Yeah, because you're supposed to have bias with your agents and your lender because they're sticking up for you in the process. You mm -hmm. hired them. You're paying them to stick up for you. Yeah. Right. What you're paying me, what you're paying me to do is make sure that paperwork is all done correctly, get you off of the title and then the new person on the title, and the new person getting the title free and clear of any loans or encumbrances or anything that would interfere with their ownership of the property. And to make sure that happens, we do the background research, we clear off any old loans, we make sure they're all paid off, mm -hmm. we pay the seller the money that they're due, right, when they sell the property. Right. But we also, primarily what the title is, is an insurance company. We issue insurance to ensure that the transaction happens the way that it should happen. Okay, Greg, so what exactly is an owner's policy? What does that mean? So a lender, the a title company will issue a title, two types of title policies. One is an owner's policy for the person who owns the property, uh -huh. and it's an insurance policy. A title company is primarily an insurance company and an escrow company. So they issue an owner's policy for the owner, the new buyer, and they issue a lender's policy for the lender or the loan on the property. Mm, the okay. owner's policy, now here's here's something that you might not know, oh, and you try. brought this up. No, you, you, <laughs> oh. you, you know this, okay. you might not know this. You don't need a title company, and you don't need title insurance. You could pass it with a deed without doing any of that stuff. And then you're gonna find yourself in a big fat mess because nobody knows what they're doing. <laughs> That's true. Exactly. It's just like an auto exactly. loan. If you go pay cash for your car, you don't need full coverage insurance. You can no. do liability only. Same thing with your house. If you have a loan, you need a lender's policy. If you have an owner, it's a good idea to get an owner's policy because the owner's policy covers. covers so say if you, if you buy a property or if you're selling a property, you're gonna pr transfer that property with what's called a warranty deed. The warranty deed has certain warranties or guarantees mm -hmm. that the new buyer has. The, the guarantee that they own it outright, the guarantee, and there's like five or six or seven that you guys study in, mm -hmm. in real estate school about what all the, the guarantees are for a warranty deed. So if one of those warranties is broken, you make a claim against your title policy and the title company pays to fix it. 
Mm -hmm. So if there's somebody else who's claiming an interest in your property, or there's somebody who's saying, hey, there's a mechanic's lien or a contractor's lien on this house. Which you'd think couldn't happen, but the interest- All the time. Yeah, so wait, yeah, so yeah. all this is recorded at the county. It's all digital, right? Like if I have a claim to the house, it's recorded. And, it, and it's there. Sometimes it's there and sometimes it's not How there. How is it possibly not there? Like why is, well, like why do I really need this? And so say for instance, this is a this is a hypothetical and I've got some real, real life examples we can talk about, but a hypothetical is um, grandpa owns the land and grandpa owns a bunch of acreage out in um, Tooele County, let's say, the farmer. Tooele, okay. okay. And then grandpa dies and the family comes together and sells off all the land to a developer. And then the developer develops um, all these individual houses and builds on them and everything. Well, somebody in going through grandpa's stuff 10 years later finds a will. Oh, yes. That somehow transferred title to somebody else besides the heirs of the property. Oh, a mistress. That's what I was thinking. <laughs> or a they cat. were in love. Right <laughs> oh, or a cat. Or, yeah. or a cat. Or it gave it to a, 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 charity, a charity or something like that. Yes. And that will wasn't known, and it was something that was done that's a viable will. Recorded was, in the past before any of this happened. Yeah, before any of this happened, or that's not even recorded at all. And there it is. And it's a legal document that transfers title to somebody else who has an interest in that piece of property. Well, now what? Because now there's houses all over it. Whew. Oh, and yeah. title insurance. owners yes. and owners who live there, title yeah. insurance. Messing with their house. So <laughs> I have a real life example. I have a real life wow. example. So I am also an attorney and I used to litigate here in Utah. So there was a guy who bought a bunch of land in Pleasant Grove. It was a big uh, piece of farmland or, or uh, orchard or something like that. And he bought it on, on contract. So he had the contract said, hmm. I'm going to pay you installments, three different installments of money and the seller was supposed to have the property developed to a certain point on each installment, okay. mm-hmm. right? So I'll pay you this amount of money and you're gonna, you're gonna plow it and then you know, you're gonna level it off and then I'll pay you this amount of money and then you're gonna stub it and then I'll pay you this amount of money and you're gonna finish out the lots on the roads. Mm-hmm. Three things. The guy paid two installments. Some development work was done. This person, the, the buyer, moved out of state mm-hmm. and then went to jail. <laughs> in a different state okay it was in Oregon this person went to jail for like seven years or something he went to prison actually okay. uh, it was he was a professional it was a white collar thing anyway I, I can't reveal too much because this person was my client <laughs> <laughs> so um, after this person gets out of jail they come back and there's houses all over this land and he goes huh I have this contract that says that I own this so of course he sued everybody that was involved. There was so what happened is wow. they couldn't find wow. him. The seller couldn't find him. Oh, and man. I think there was some shady stuff that was going on. Uh, and they ended up selling the land to another person. So they took his money, sold the land again to another person. Ooh. That other person developed it. Ooh. So the question was, and here's the thing. But he never finished all three installments. He yeah. never finished the installments, but he was like, I need my, I, I want this land. I have an interest in this land. And you, I have, so he leaned all the properties because there was now a lawsuit. So he filed a Liz Pendens, which is a, a legal document right. mm-hmm. showing there's litigation on the property. So it encumbered all of the land, all of these brand new homes <laughs> in Pleasant Grove. <laughs> this, is, this, is, this is a case oh, I worked man. on. I represented this guy, the guy who was suing them, the guy who, who had the contract. Oh. And... We actually, so this, so what happened is this would be a massive, massive title claim because yeah. the contract was recorded. Oh, it showed dude. up on chain of title. And it wasn't voided or canceled. No, nope, it was there. And the oh, guy had a notice sh- of interest nice. on the property recorded against the chain of title. Now it gets iffy of where, whether a title <laughs> company will, will cover something that's not recorded or unknown. And there's bigger and smaller policies, just like auto policies that you can buy to cover yeah. greater and smaller risk. Ow. And so, so wow. <laughs> th- this this would have been a massive title policy um, claim had we not lost the case. 
<laughs> so we ended up losing because because it was too late. There was a statute of limitations problem that this guy seven years. He, yeah, he he was in prison for longer than the, than the time it was for him to claim on his contract. Wow. That so bites. they ended up saying well, you, you, you're you're barred from recovery because because of I this. mean, and we were trying to say well. And here's the thing, is that statute of limitations is not, they don't stop the clock running if you're in jail. Even yeah. if you're at a state in prison, yeah, they don't stop the still, clock. Because yeah. you can do stuff from jail, right? Yeah. So so he, he lost. Um, we were trying to argue but, that it was delayed because if he would go out there and see the property being developed, he would have thought it was for him versus that it was sold to another party that he would not have known about. Anyway, there was all this legal stuff that went on, but... If he, this is why title if insurance is important. If it wasn't statute of limitations and it was within that right. time period, so if he would have what come would back, have happened? Well, how would have title so insurance five years later instead that? of eight yeah. years later? So if he yeah. if he had come back, this is great. So this is if he had come back within the time and perfected his claim against the property on the perfected contract, means means made the claim and filed a lawsuit uh-huh. and come back and said I'm, all cl- the I'm claiming mm-hmm. this and and he did it right there would have been a massive title policy claim and the title policy, the title company that handled the transaction between the Him. seller and the new buyer, new buyer yeah. would have to pay all the people that are in there his claim. So he would make a claim against that. The insurance policy would have to take care of it, pay him his value, and he would have received the value basically from the insurance policies that were covering all of that land for those new owners. Because now there was somebody claiming that they had ownership rights in their land. And he did. In their new he home did. that wow. they just moved into. Yeah. Luckily wow. for them and this title company, because there was a lot of shady stuff going on that the title company, and this is actually before I knew anything about title. This is when I was a litigator, like another lifetime ago, right? So wow. that's why that's- you need title insurance. That is why you need it because something like that will happen in a brand new development in Pleasant Grove where everybody's got you their brand new assumed, you, squeaky You, you would have never thought something. This yeah. wasn't like something out in yeah, you're you're the edge of town it. somewhere yeah. doing it. Yeah. This was in the middle and a up and up yeah. development. Well, I mean, this was, in, this was 20 years ago, right? It was 20 years ago is when it happened. But it was still, you know, there was a lot more land available then. But still, it's within a regular was you town. Was about the other home in Pleasant Grove where <coughs> the it was Ario? Bank owned, so they were selling the property. They had evicted the guy twice. Oh, Did you hear about? No. And he kept moving back in before they could sell. Oh. And so <clears throat> the bank had claim, like it was their home, but no one would issue title insurance on it because they didn't want to deal with the litigation or the legal matters yeah. of getting the guy out. Yeah. And that's one thing that you'd find out doing title work. So the real estate agent was marketing it cash mm-hmm. only. And you go in cash only, you don't need title. Yeah, you don't need because you don't need you don't need yeah. it. You can drive around without insurance on your car. Yeah, yeah. It's against the law, but you can. Well, yeah. it's not it's not a law to get only. title. Yeah, or you can just get liability. You only wreck your car, and they say, "Sorry." Yeah. Or you I, or you get hit by somebody that's beyond the the policy limits mm-hmm. of whatever it is. Yeah. You know. So, like, yeah, you, t- title insurance doesn't just ensure your right to title; it makes sure that you have a right to title. Yeah, that like you have that a, an insurable. This home isn't a risk. Even. Right. That you, yeah. you don't move in and then have a lawsuit. Because what would happen if, so say there wasn't a title insurance policy issued on this case we're talking about with mm-hmm. all the land and the new, and the new houses. If there was no title policy issued, then all of those people would then have to sue the developer that sold them the land. And the developer would be on the hook. The seller would be on the hook for all the damages instead of their insurance policy. That, and then that puts them under because that's it. There's a yeah, hundred no homes, yeah. yeah, and they all, you know, he he owns twenty percent or three two thirds of a contract of of the land, whatever the value there is. You know, you can litigate the value, but like he, you know, wow. all of a sudden this developer is on the hook if that's they don't have a title of, policy. Yeah, millions, millions of dollars. Well, Even if it isn't millions of dollars, it's hours and hours and hours in court. And yes. paying thousands of dollars to your lawyer to fight it. I mean, yeah, just like, the lawsuit. Well, one of the biggest things that I've taken away from, like, just listening to this and the grandpa story with the land mm-hmm. is this isn't just something that happened right when you they found out right when the, the new buyer bought the house and lived and they found out within, you know, six months, you know, something happened. Oh, yeah, it was like 
this grandpa store that sold land. I mean, that was ten years later. That could that, be two or three owners I mean, that, later. That's that, a hypothetical. Yeah, but, yeah, but, but the it's real a, life but story realistic. was like nearly a decade after they had developed yeah, that. Yeah, and land. so yeah. that's where. I mean, could you imagine coming home one day and realizing that you don't have title to your yeah, house? You get like, <laughs> or I mean, that it's in dispute, right? Or I mean, it's yeah. in this, and you're now being sued There's, for this or that, or you have a million dollar lien against you, or yeah. for whatever it is. Yeah. That's that's the stuff like it's not worth it. And title insurance is not like half the price of your home. Like it doesn't cost it's that. pretty cheap. It's, well, it's so, fairly cheap. It's a one time cost. It's built it. into the cost of the of the sale and the purchase. Yes. You take it out of the proceeds of the sale. It's it's something that is very simple to do. And uh, title insurance costs between now title insurance costs go up with the value of the house and down. So that's a sliding scale because we're insuring risk. Yeah, so you're insuring right. the value of the home to the new buyer mm-hmm. and the seller pays for that title policy. And it generally it's between like total title, like a policy is probably between anywhere. The lower end is like $500 and the higher end is like $2,000. Yeah. Not bad. And then there's like $250 of a settlement fee just for me to do the paperwork and pay my right. staff. And so it's not expensive. And what you hit right off, like the Utah state purchase contract, the real estate contract states that the seller is going to buy the owner's policy just if you follow it the way it is yeah and then the lender requires a lender's policy on them and it's important that there's two policies and uh so the lender's policy and and this is something you can know before we get into that you can negotiate who pays for the policy right yeah. so you guys know this yeah. it, mm-hmm. it, it's standard in the utah rep c that says seller's seller going to buy pay, a title yeah. policy of the owner but you can negotiate that. So if you're coming in as a, an investor, that, you know, which we've done, I've done as an mm-hmm. investor, we'll pay all the title costs as part of your offer. So now in this market of crazy, crazy, like mm-hmm. high demand and low inventory, mm-hmm. as a buyer, the realtor can come in and say, we'll pay for the title costs. We'll pay for all the seller's yeah, closing costs. We'll pay costs. for the seller's closing costs, we'll pay for our closing costs to sweeten the deal, mm-hmm. so you get that deal. and. When you pay for the title policy, you get to pick where your your title, uh, who does your title. So whoever's paying for title gets to pick where they do the title work. And it can be different from buyer and seller. They can be two different title companies, which it usually is. Unless they're coming out of cash. Unless you're a cash buyer or yeah. or somebody else is paying for the title policy, yeah. then you don't get to choose. But if a policy is being issued, whoever's paying for that policy, they get to choose who to work with for their title company. Okay. So, Let's talk about chain of title now. Well, like a 24 month chain. So um, the lender, <laughs> the lender will require a 24 month chain of title. And that is what we do. We go, we have somebody go down to the county recorder's office. So everything that's on like listed against the property is contained at the county recorder's office. Anybody can walk in. It's public record. Utah County is free online. Mm. I think yeah. Wasatch County is online and Salt Lake is online, but I think you need to have subscriptions to Salt get Lake this charges, Salt Lake yeah. charges. Mm-hmm. But anybody can go in, like if you live in Nephi or you live wherever where it's like a smaller county, you can walk into the county's office mm-hmm. and say, I want to look at records. And you look, oh look, this person has a loan for this amount. And, and anybody can look at anybody's property. Yeah, that's why Pub- you- Public record. Yeah, that's why you yes. get junk mail when you get a new loan. Because people go down and mine that data, and yep. then they send you junk mail because you did a refi, yeah. and they say, "Hey, you bought a home, or you did a refi, and I want to sell you garbage that you Furniture. don't need." Furniture, yeah, whatever. Get like, something to hear. Yeah, get yeah. new windows and buy solar panels, and yeah. you know, and then they try to scam you. By <laughs> Not saying, your lender's fault. Didn't sell your yeah. info. They go down there and look yeah. it up. Neither did the title company. Yeah, neither, neither did, did your real estate agent. <laughs> yeah. no. It's we didn't sell None of your information. It's public record. So. Um, so we do a 24 month chain of title, which shows who owned it for 24 months. And it's just like a link links in the chains. This person did, and then this loan was on it. And then that loan was on it. And then this was removed. And then somebody did a quit claim deed. And then this, and this. And so it's this chain Mm -hmm. that they want to know because one of the jobs of the title company is to make sure that's all cleaned up in that transaction, lenders in first position, buyer owns it free and clear. Mm-hmm. So just in case we missed it, first position, this is chronological. Yes. So I as a lender need to be in first position because if I foreclose, and I want else. the house or I want the money, one or the other, 
I don't want to mess around with it. So I'm first. If they did a home equity line of credit, if they did some work on it and the contractor has a lien on it, they can have their money after the bank gets theirs. Right. Yes. So the bank, the, the primary mortgage lender, the first mortgage will want to be in first position. That's why it's called a first mortgage. Yep. Before any second mortgage, before any mechanics liens, before any... The only thing you guys don't get ahead of is tax liens. Taxes, yeah. yeah. Sorry. <laughs> but that's tax why liens. you Sorry. have a job. <laughs> right, because I look and say, hey, seller has a tax lien. Yeah, IRS going back or a, two years, or a state what's tax happened? Lien. Is or, this purchase price going to pay all of that? Or there's a child support lien on the property, yeah. or there's a yeah. judgment against that person, or there's a divorce decree that affects the ownership of that property when it's transferred. So, so you know, those don't happen here in Utah. No, of course not. No. <laughs> There's no one that's ever been divorced and not transferred the title properly for the court's decree and then tried to sell it out from underneath the other spouse. It oh, never happens. That never happens. So that's what title does. They, we figure out what's there. We figure out what needs to be done to clear that title up, put the lender in first position. We issue a loan policy in, ensuring that you're in first position nope. because you want to have that security that you're in first position, just like the owner wants to have the security that they own that property free and clear. That's where the title insurance comes from. Okay, so what about like back in the day, before there was like the county recorder's office? The county recorder's office did not exist back in the day of Utah. Uh, when people settled here because it was outside of the United States and it was outside of... There wasn't even a county. No county. Or a state. <laughs> no yeah. state, no... It was territory of Mexico. Yeah. So they moved in. They started their farms in 1849. There was no title to the land. When they became a territory, you had to file a claim with the U.S. government to get title to your property, uh, legal recognized title by the government. Um, and you've heard the term claim jumper, which is if you you had to file that claim and if someone filed a claim prior to you, they could get the title to your land and come in and try to kick you off of it and then you'd probably get shot. But if you came with an army and you <laughs> know, the kicked West these people it. off their, That's their how the farms. West was won. <laughs> so what happened is that they had the, the, the people of Provo actually had a really big problem because in the West, the land and the farms were smaller because of lack of water. So they more, farmed them more intensely and they had smaller farms. Mm-hmm. And the law said it's 160 acres or bigger for a claim. Well, nobody had that here, or few people did. So they passed a law in the 1860s, 1867, Congress passed a law that gave the leader, or the the government leader of the town, the right to file a claim on behalf of the people of the town for smaller than 160 acres. So what happened is that Abraham Smoot was the governor of Provo, and Brigham Young appointed, well, uh, Brigham Young and Mayor Smoot urged Provo residents to file uh, claims on their land before the claim jumpers from the east came out here and did it. So what they did is they got together with the town meeting. Abraham Smoot said, we'll pay for the survey for every single resident of Provo, the city of Provo. We'll file a claim for the whole city of Provo, and then when you come and pay for your survey, you get your land. So they said, great, we'll do it. So they voted on it, and that's what happened. So all of the chain of title... Everybody in Provo, any piece of property that's within the city of Provo, or the old city of Provo, it's probably expanded since then. Yeah. When you look back at about who owned it, goes back, goes back, goes back, goes back, goes back, goes back, all the way back to the 1860s, 1868, Abraham Smoot is the owner of every single piece of property in Provo. <laughs> all of the property cool. goes all the way back to Abraham that's Smoot. Cool. So that's a little something for your trivia file of what a chain of title is. So if you live in the city of Provo, Abraham Smoot at one time owned your house. That's right. <laughs> <laughs> and claim. all your neighbors' houses. And yeah. everybody around you, because he was the governor and he got all the claim and then people came in and That's cool. paid like for their that. survey and got their land. It was so, a happy ending. I thought they were just going to not give their claims. Yeah, and then <laughs> Abraham <laughs> skips town and <laughs> skips town, owns everything. He jumped everybody. <laughs> yeah, he's like, this is mine now, punks. No, yeah, so that, it's pretty cool. This is actually, um, I got this from a plaque uh, in a park in Provo, I just came across it and I was like reading one of those little, uh-huh. you know, yeah. little informational yeah. plaques like an old man, and I was like, "Wait, <laughs> this has to do with title." And I was reading it and I was like, "Oh, that's really interesting." So that's there where it go. came from. So now, yeah, along yeah. with chain of command, chain of title, <laughs> chain, chain, chain of command, chain of command. Chain of command. Chain of yes, sir. Here. Yes. Chain of command. Yeah, yeah. I have the, the queen. Scepter. The queen rules all. Um, queen. And 
all of the title insurance and the lender's policies, what else do you do? I mean, it doesn't title do a lot of other smaller things as a well? A lot of things. So mm -hmm. what you can expect, if you're gonna buy or sell a property, what 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 does the title company do and what can you expect? The you first, need a PR. The first thing we do. Yes, what's a PR? Is we get a search. Per. It's a per. The first thing we do is we get a search that searches what's on your property in the chain of title. We find out what's there, what loans are there, if there's liens, if there's tax liens, whatever. And then we prepare what's called a PR, which is another is, is an acronym for a preliminary report mm -hmm. or not a title, the, not or the a, final title, not policy. the final policy, not the final report, the preliminary report report before the transaction happens, or it's just called a title report. Well, and this is one of the things. As soon as you go under contract, we turn around and tell Greg or whoever the title is, it should be Greg, and says, hey, <laughs> it should be. we're under contract on this, 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 can you get a PR started? And so that's done right away and right up it, front. It's, it's all your title guys already starting to work as soon well, as you're under things, contract. There's things you find out besides who owned it, like what about, what can the power company do or kind of the water department? are on there, can yeah. you even, easements. is your house even What's where the it's exact supposed dimensions? to be? Yeah. I actually talked to somebody today <sighs> about they bought a piece of land that they did not know had an easement for a well. Oh, but somebody else had an easement on their property that they did not know about oh, for a snap. well that was located on their property that feeds the neighboring property's culinary water. Oh, wow. And the well is located on their property. That sounds fun. Yeah, it's out in Eagle that's Mountain. Interesting. Yeah. Yeah, there's a lot yeah, of there's really, a lot of weird stuff that's ha that happens. But you want to know about this, and this is why it's done right away, because yeah. if it has all of these crazy easements on there, yeah. and you think you're getting an acre lot that you're going to build this big, beautiful shop on in the back, and you find out that a farmer Power has uh, an underground culvert that comes from here yeah. to here, which I know of several stories <laughs> that it's done, <laughs> and you don't notice that prior, you can't build or you, there. you could build your nice shop there and then the farmer says hey there's a problem with my ditch under your property I'm going to rip down your shed and, and yeah. Become, sorry yeah it's because I have legal right because yeah. they yeah. have an easement yeah. or there's like a drainage easement or there's uh, utility easements or setbacks or something yeah. where you can't mm -hmm. build a certain thing so that's what the title company does we find out what's there what you're buying it's part of the seller's disclosures is this, is yeah. this PR that you find out what's there so then you can have bargaining power of saying, hey, I want you to clear off this. And because there's an easement there, I'm actually purchasing less of a property than I thought I was. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. So I want to you know, negotiate on price or whatever. So that, that's valuable information for the real estate agent. Mm. Um, and here's a, here's a little piece of trivia. The person getting the loan and the person selling the property, you can pick who your title company is regardless of who your real estate agent or your lender says. Mm -hmm. They have relationships with people who they trust right. and you should probably trust them. But if you want somebody else, you can choose somebody else. Yeah. Um, Just make sure to tell them. Because yeah. we don't know yeah. who it is. Who it is. Your title guys show up to settlement in a Tarzan outfit. Yeah, I might. I'm great. Good. I might. Well, that, actually, that's a good point because the uh, not the Tarzan bit, but I'm talking about, <laughs> I'm talking about like uh, title is part of your due diligence, which is part of uh, mm -hmm. you know the, your first deadline. It's part of appraisal and uh, not appraisal, but uh, more Fine. financing. And they're also part of the settlement. Like literally, title is woven into the contract. We are, we actually, are the, the person who buys the house. You yeah. find the house. I get the money for the house. I send all the money to title, which in Utah is escrow as well. Yeah. Yes. We're the matrix. We're behind the scenes. We're controlling everything. Mm -hmm. You never see us. You never know whether we're there. Yeah. Until you're glad you, they are. Yeah. 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 Glad yeah. Really, really glad. Well, they are. if they're good. Yes. Exactly. If yeah. they're bad, then you hate it and they never communicate. And yeah. it's important to get communication from your title company because they're the ones that provide the title report. Right. They're the ones that, that work with your lender to get them the information they need about fees and costs and what needs to be removed. And then escrow is one is another thing that title company does at the transaction. We collect the money from the buyer. We put it in an escrow account. Escrow just means a bank account where the money is designated for someone else. That's yeah. all it is. Third party. So it's a, we're a third party, neutral third party. We collect all the money. We pay off the loans on the property. We pay off the tax lien. We pay off the child support lien. We pay off everything so it's all free and clear. We pay the seller their proceeds. And then we go down to the county recorder's office. Well, we do it electronically now. With the deed that is signed by the seller, we record that and then we record the loan. Okay, wait, wait, wait. Boom, All the deeds boom. I've ever seen, 
How many houses sell for ten dollars? Aha! Good question. <laughs> Most of them. Most, so Most why, of them in Utah. Why, why is it ten? Why does it say on the deeds for ten dollars and other good and valuable consideration? Well, it's because it's it's public record at the title office at the county recorder's office. It's public record, so we don't disclose what the value is. We just recite that there is a value because you could sell a property for one penny. As long as there's an exchange of value, there's a binding contract between buyer and seller. Mm -hmm. So to enforce that contract, to make sure there's what's called consideration between the parties, there's value that's bargained for. I get the land, you get one penny. Doesn't matter what the consideration is. As long as there is value, it's a legally binding transaction that can be enforced in a court of law. So we recite that there's a value of $10 and other good in consideration, good and valuable consideration, equaling three hundred fifty thousand dollars. Yeah, for the price Which of the is home. Good because someone can't go down to the county, see that someone bought this really nice house and there's no loan on it. So now this person knows this person has money. You have a lot of money. I'm going to go trip on his sidewalk. Or <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I fall in a pit in his lawn. Yeah. Or you know that you. Um, all of the market data is controlled by the sales of the properties. So if, you, if you're if you looking for values of properties, it's all based on what is reported publicly. And if you have a private sale, for instance, between a neighbor or something that's less than the full value of the property, you don't want the neighbors mad at you for lowering the property value by saying, hey, you bought this for $100,000 under value. Well, yeah, because this guy owed me a bunch of money for legal work that I did, so he sold me his house for less. Ding, and then there's the, you know, there's the, there's the lesser value. So we do not report it mm-hmm. at the county recorder's office to make sure that it's not publicly disclosed. Yeah. So all of the market data is controlled by the market and not by what, the, what actually happened between the two people because that's private information. Right, it's it's private. So yeah. uh, there you go. And um, we also offer you really cool uh, water bottles at closing. So <laughs> that's about and all pens. we can do. And pens. Sometimes we give <laughs> yeah. you pens. Yeah. Um, uh, maybe a sticky pad. So yeah. title companies are extremely heavily regulated yeah, by the true. state, and mm-hmm. we can't we can't do a lot because they want us to remain neutral. They don't want us to be able to sway people. They want us to be able to, you should be able to pick a title company based on who you want to work with and who you trust based on, except and not based on because your title company has given a kickback to your realtor or yeah. something like mm-hmm. that. So they when want us to be a commodity that is equally sold across the board. So you want to form a relationship or have some, so you have, you want to be able to pick a really good title yeah. person versus a really bad title person. Because uh, the bar to entry to title is very low. <laughs> it really is. So there is one regulation that happens in the purchase contract. So once again, if you're getting a loan or using the purchase contract, you got to have an Alta title, not a Snowbird or a Sundance, <laughs> but an Alta title. Yes. What What's Alta? Um, that's a good question. ALTA is American Land Title Association. is uh, is sort of like a. It, it's the standard title policy. Uh, it's an, it's just what they call the standard insurance policy, and it's something that covers everything that's recorded on the chain of title, and then you can buy bigger ones if you want, uh, or you don't have to have a title com- title insurance policy if you want. But the American Land Title Association has an approved value of insurance, mm-hmm. and that's what's being issued. It's an ALTA owner's policy or a homeowner's policy. If you actually, there's either an owner's policy or a homeowner's policy that's a bigger one. It's just the the names they give them. So it's regulated a little bit, but like, so what if you get a title policy and you get an Alta title policy and the title company goes out of business? Then the underwriter is actually the one who's issuing the policy. So the title in the title companies aren't issuing the policy unless you're, so most of the title companies that you see are agencies of a larger underwriter. Like, um, Old Republic is one. They actually have title offices. Um, we have a, a attorney's title guarantee fund as our underwriter. Um, it's sort of like if you pay, if you have a farmer's insurance agent, you write your checks to Fire Insurance Exchange. That's the underwriter for mm-hmm. the farmer's agent. So the mm-hmm. underwriter is the big company that actually holds gotcha. the liability. Does that make sense? So yeah. the agency is just 
somebody's out there who is doing the work and selling the policies for the underwriters who are actually on the hook for the claims. So if your title company goes out of business, which happened a ton in the market crash, yeah. all these, there was a ton, ton of title companies because it was really easy to do title and lots of people were doing flips and this and that and it was all this Wild West stuff. And then the market crashed and like half of the title companies went out of business. An expert witness as an attorney and a title officer in a case with a flipper where everybody was suing each other because what happened in the flipper uh, instance is the everybody paid their money into title. So they, there was a flipper who was buying, say, I'm buying from you okay. and I'm selling to you. And you used to be able to do it in one transaction. So you would pay for the whole transaction. I would get my chunk and then I would pay off your loan. It was called a simultaneous close. You can't do those anymore. You have to do close, close. So okay. that used to be you to go, all the buyer's funds would trickle all the way down from my transaction and your transaction between us. I see. So the buyer paid their funds into the title company. All the money was there. I had a contract, hypothetically, to buy from you, to sell to you, and you were gonna pay for the whole so thing. So you were assigning the contract, basically. It wasn't, this, it, was an, it wasn't an assignment, it was an actual contract between this person, and then this person's had a contract for this person, and it was gonna go, I but buy it never from really, you, I buy from you, really and you it. buy it from you, but you own it for like a minute. <clears throat> There was actually a warranty deed and then a warranty deed. Wow. Does that make sense? Used to, be, used to be you could do that back in the Wild West days. Um, and what happened is they paid money into a title company and then the owner of that title company took all of the money from the title company, flew to Mexico, shut their doors, and the entire thing evaporated. <laughs> prior, that would be worth it. Prior, Ouch, to, go, prior to having the transaction actually happen. Just how much money is... Did he run away Something with something like that? It was millions because it's an escrow. It, they're like, you know, it wasn't so just how many this transactions? One transaction. Because, like, cause I don't know because I was only the expert witness on oh explaining man. what oh happened man. with the short sale. It was a short That's sale. Terrible. So, this person was selling on a short sale, and this person was buying at wholesale or not wholesale, but real retail from the, from the flipper. And the money went into the title company, and then the title company evaporated. None of the title was transferred, the money didn't go anywhere. The, the guy was like on drugs and was like high on cocaine and was having hookers come over to his title office. I think I saw that movie. Left town. <laughs> it was called <laughs> What Not To Do, what, <laughs> Who Not To Hire For Title. Yes. And they left oh. town, right? So they left and so then there was, everybody started suing everybody because then nobody got their money and nobody got the title to the property. <gasps> And this was only one instance of a title company uh, of this one transaction. And this guy had an escrow, I mean, millions and millions of dollars going well, out I'm just of thinking about escrow it. account daily. Like, I work with right? several real estate agents because I need, they make more than I make on a transaction, which is more than you make on a transaction. Correctly. But Correctly? Correctly. more money moves here than anywhere else. So I have... Because, yeah, all the money comes... Millions, tens of millions that I have access to. Because, I mean, my company moves lots of homes. Right. So, like, tens of millions, hundred millions isn't really that that big. I mean, you have one half million dollar transaction. You have another. Like, all the money's gone. And so, you work with lots of lenders. Right. And, and lots so of sellers. And so, all the money flows into that. Hundreds of millions... Easily hundreds of millions. Yeah, like wow. if you had a big Oof. day, like one day or a week or something where you had a bunch of transactions, it's like Ocean's there would be millions and millions Ocean's and millions of dollars yeah, in your right? escrow account. Yeah. And o Ocean's it, one. I own a title company. <laughs> yeah, and then, and then this guy just like <laughs> disappeared. Oh, God. This well, is why you need a good title company, and that's, and that's what I was just going to say. Is like <laughs> sitting here listening to these crazy stories and all the ins and outs and how you've been able to, like the way that you've described this stuff, like that represents why you should make sure you're working with a title company. Don't just work with any and, anyone out yeah. there. I mean, and work with somebody company, that works. And a title officer who knows what they're doing. Exactly. Most yes. title officers are not attorneys. I am an attorney. I am also a yes. real estate investor who has, I've flipped myself over 200 properties since I started real estate investing like 15 years ago. Mm -hmm. Like I've done it myself. Yeah. I know every part of that transaction. I know the law surrounding it. I, you know, like it's well, the, bar, can, the bar to title to entry is like you have to like take a test and pass it, and you get a title license. No, there's education? no classes. No, nope. <laughs> you have to learn the stuff, and you have to go and take the test, and that's about all you have to do. Well, and I can like so personally. I mean, 
Greg and Rudden Hawks has. We're all every title. You, you guys have our attorneys done our some company. amazing work because like you've came through some crazy situations on some of our clients, um, and it makes the difference right then and there and it it really is awesome to have somebody that has the knowledge to know what to do as well as having the 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 attorney knowledge on the background like i'm not just the title i wouldn't do this this and this because that's not legally smart either well like i've got i've got i've got another story too about why a good title officer is good it's like getting a haircut you can get a haircut from almost anyone what kind of haircut do you want? Do you want to go? And they basically charge the same thing. Mm-hmm. If you're going to go get a $35 haircut from anybody who's, or you can get a $6 haircut or you can get a $50 haircut, but title is all the same. They're going to charge you the same thing. Regulated by the state of Utah. Regulated yes. by the state of Utah because mm-hmm. it's so. all basically within a certain range. Who are you going to pick? Are you going to pick the person that doesn't know what they're doing? Or are you going to per- pick the person who's the Hollywood stylist? Right? Like, mm-hmm. You're going to get a hack job or you're going to get somebody who knows what they're actually doing. So when I bought my house, I paid cash for my house. Um, I, I got a loan from my parents. Let's not, let's not pretend I'm rich. Or <laughs> my, parents gave me, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> my, my parents gave me a cash loan that I then refinanced when I bought it. So, but it was, it was helpful t- for me to offer cash because I was actually in second position behind another buyer. Uh-huh. And then, and then. They, your they, offer. Yeah, I was trying yeah. to get my offer. Anyway, so um, so I couldn't pick the title company, even though it was my house and I'm a title officer. I could, I had to go with the seller's title company. Mm. So when I got the property, there was this issue that pops up on the chain of title where there's a strip of land that's five feet wide that's in my driveway, that's neighboring my my neighbor's house, that's still owned by the neighbor. Right but, in the middle of your driveway. On the side. Okay. So what happened is there was like there was two lots next to each other, and two or three owners ago, the the owner of my house bought a strip of land on the side of the house for their RV from the neighbor, and they didn't use a title company, and they signed a deed, or they they called up some attorney that didn't know what they were doing. Hmm. Attorneys don't know what they're doing. Just because you're an attorney, they don't know what they're doing with <laughs> That's title. Very true. Lots they of professionals don't, yes, don't yes, know what they're but, doing. Title attorneys know what they're doing. So this, they had some attorney drop the, drop the deed and they signed it and everybody went their way and died because it was like 40 years ago and they were all old people. <laughs> okay. and so they died. They're so all, it was morbid. It still was morbid. Yes. They're all dead. So I get, the, I get the house and I'm like, what is this little disputed piece of land here? So what happened is the people who sold it to, to the neighbor who owned my property, they had it in a trust. The trust owned the property, not them. Hmm. <laughs> they didn't sign it as trustees of the trust. They signed it as individuals, no. which was improper because they didn't own it as individuals. So they signed their names instead of signing their names as trustees of the trust. So it never was, was so it done was never right. proper. So they found out about it a couple of years later. You can see this on the chain of title. They found out about it a couple of years later. Mm-hmm. They tried to fix it. Again, fixed it wrong. Didn't transfer <laughs> properly. They again signed it in the names of them individually. Again, for some reason, they're trying to save a dollar. Yeah, they, <laughs> they, they really were. They were. It's and like so discount they, title, discount brokerage, exactly. discount lenders. They did. They they just they didn't do it right. And so now, currently to this day, the piece of property that 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 is in dispute is still in dispute today. And so what happened is the title company that I had to use just said, well, we're not going to fix it, but we'll just continue. We'll issue you a title policy. There's been no claims on it. We don't there's think we'll no be problem. sued. Exactly. We'll be fine. Yeah. Away they so go. I said, whatever. Because it's, you know, there's a fence line is there and it's all covered with driveway and it goes back about halfway back my uh, on my lot. <laughs> the, the chances of there being a claim are very low, but the if the heirs of the people who sold it, who are all dead now and they've all moved away, if the heirs of the people who sold that were to make a claim, they could come in and take that property from me. But what this is Gregory ha- Hansen. He lives <laughs> <laughs> come in his driveway. What what I would have to do in order to secure that? I mean, th- enough time has passed that I could claim it's boundary by acquisition is what it's actually called. Yeah. If you have a boundary line that's moved at a certain point and there's a dispute about that boundary line, if I've paid taxes on it and I've improved it for a certain period of time. Your, I think it's, it's 20 thing. years and that's probably already passed between me and the previous buyers, the previous owners. But in order to actually get it, 
I would have to file a quiet title action in court, prove that I have done that for the requisite time period, have a court declare that piece of property belongs to this parcel. I don't want to do that, so I just left it. <laughs> this is why it's important. This is why it's important to have a good title company because or yes. to use a title company at all. Yes. Because first of all, they should have used a title company because it would have been done properly. And secondly, if a good title company would have been the one that I bought it from, they would have gone back and cleared it up and long it. fixed ago it, yeah. and fixed it before. But they were lazy and they were like, well, we'll just issue the policy. Here you go. I mean, whatever. Because I knew it wasn't exactly going to be a big risk. Sounded, actually. Yeah. yeah, it is. I was, no, I yeah. wasn't. <laughs> <laughs> you guys on the phone. Well, I, have, I have one more question for you, then we can wrap up, I guess. But uh, people ask us all the time, because buyers especially are like, I'm going to have a stack of papers in there, and it's going to be so big, and my hand's going to hurt when I come out. And I've had multiple people ask me, hey, can I just make a stamp? And That's the a lender that, problem. The answer or, to that is or, no, you cannot. Or e-signature. Yeah. Can't we just e-sign everything? Why can't we do that, Greg? It's all, it's all, it, I, I blame the lenders in the state of Utah. So the lenders have a big You're package. the only one here, so we're just going to blame you. <laughs> it's fine. They have, little, it. they have a big stack <laughs> of papers to sign, and you have to sign them in person. Some lenders now are trending toward a partial e-sign and a partial oh, but only physical partial. sign. Oh. Because the, the reason it's only partial is because the state of Utah makes a notary witness you in person signing the document. So if even if it's a half E sign and half notary sign, I still have to be there as the notary to witness you as a human being signing that document that sells your property, which for obvious reasons is a good thing to do. Yeah. But I have yeah. to be there. I have to verify your identity. Yes. And know that yes, this person is the one who's selling the house. And sound mind. Their name yeah. And that you're not being Influenced coerced. by anybody or coerced or something yeah. that you're not there under duress or of some kind or you're not, you know, elder abuse like you're pretending to be your grandpa and selling their land and getting all the money and going to Mexico, um, stuff so like that. Like another stories. story, <laughs> something something like that. You know, so I have to be there in person to witness you and verify your identity to sell or purchase a property, which makes sense that you would want some verification. Now there was a rumor. It was going around a year or so ago that Utah was going to an e-notary possibility, which you could do it over like a FaceTime, yeah. or like a like a Zoom call or something. And you'd have to like the person who is signing would have to like. Is it still a no, it's Still the, a rumor? Yeah, it's still a rumor. I don't know if it's true or not, but you'd have mm. to like because some states have already done it. Yeah, it's regulated by the state, so. Um, legislation, you know how fast that moves, uh, and yeah. they're quick to jump on new technology in government. So, um, sarcastically, I say, um, but you'd have to like show the camera around the room to show that you weren't having a gun held to your head, and I'd have to verify identity. <laughs> and stuff. So, how do you verify identity? Over the, over chat, I don't know. Show a thing, or I don't. The I don't driver's know. Driver's license. There, there would be there would be a rule that said, "Here's how you have to do it." As long as yeah. I complied with that rule, <laughs> then I would be, yeah. you know. So who knows? I'll leave that up to the into the hands of the legislature, well, the legislature of Utah. But one uh, more quick little trivia thing: Can I use any pen? Why does it have to be blue? Oh, Why can't question. I sign with a red one? So or many a purple times. or a black or my three hundred dollar nice fountain pen that's black ink. So for instance, one 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 time I dropped off the, during COVID. Oh boy. I dropped off a loan package at someone's house. And I called them and said, The loan package is on your porch. Sign it and then come out and I'll come back by and you drop it off and say Hi, I did this. That's enough for a notary. As long as I have their ID, mm -hmm. I have a copy of their ID, and I've verified their identity. If they tell me I signed this, that's enough for a notary. So I could do it from a distance. Mm -hmm. So I dropped off the loan package, forgot to tell them to sign in blue ink. <laughs> Why do we sign in blue ink? Because it shows that it's an original versus a copy. Back in the day, ink. before co photocopies. Yeah, I say you can make color. color. Well. Yeah. I know a designer who could easily spoof yeah. that. It's, I'm just saying. So can it's you do it's a security ink? thing. So if they sign in a different color of ink, it's just some, be blue. It, it honestly depends on the lender. Because for our documents, again, I wouldn't care. Fault. My documents, I wouldn't care. It would be on the lender to say whether they would accept it or and not. And the lender sends instructions with a package. This is how we want them signed. This is the color of the ink. We want duplicate copies of this. We yeah. want it sent back to this person this yeah. way. I mean, you want to have some safeguards in there so that no, it's, it's not good. a copy, right? That's why it's that's one of the safeguards. That's just a question that we get at blue ink every 
Yeah, almost, that's almost every closure. Because yeah. by state, it's different. Mm-hmm. Yeah, some of them legal documents have to be in black. Some of them have to be in blue. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So, so I go pick yeah. up the loan package, and it's all in black ink, and I'm like, "Sorry, this does you have work. to sign this again." And they did. They had to sign it all over again in the blue same ink. package or union package. New package. I printed out another one. <laughs> Can't. And no I had to highlight every single thing, and drop it off, and then they had to come out and go, "I signed this from safe distance," yes. you know. So it was like fun title work. Yeah, yeah, yeah. blue ink. Sign in blue ink. If you ever get your package dropped off at your house and yes. it's COVID, then it's on, COVID, our, on our next pandemic, it's COVID twenty four. Um, <laughs> sign in blue ink. Okay, guys, what'd you learn today? Well, my key takeaway is that there's two policies, one for the owner and one for the lender. Remember that your title starts working as soon as we go under contract. They get pulled those preliminary reports to make sure that there's no easements that you can actually still use your property as you think that you can be able to use it. It's important to know that title insurance starts the time you buy the property and insures you for everything that happened before it. That's right. And it is very important that you hire and work with qualified title professionals, not any title professional, somebody who's qualified. They are worth their weight in gold. Quite literally. (laughs) Probably a little bit more than their weight in gold. (laughs) Diamonds. Ooh, there you go. Okay. I decree. You need to go like and follow the Utah Real Estate Show. Go follow us, subscribe, ask some questions. So says Her Majesty. If you got some good questions or comments or stories, Post them in the comments below. (laughs) Are you seriously gonna, you have your watch on. Hey, it's old and modern. My show ends uh, this Saturday, so unless you got tickets, this even better. <laughs> Fascinating uh, information right now. Hold yes. on to your seats, everyone. Let's go. Rivet it's it. gonna be. It's gonna be a rock and ride. It's okay. I had to readjust. So <laughs> have Eric clap. Yes, and then we. <laughs> You didn't put it on airplane mode after I told you to? (laughs) Is my feather having issues? You deserve to have an issue with your feather after that's done. Uh Uh-oh, there there it goes. Sorry, I wasn't paying attention. What was mine again? (laughs) Remember. Remember. So what are we doing?